Tropical systems impacting Australia and the Philippines on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 11th. A tropical storm continues to linger off the coast of Western Australia. 18S still hasn't received a name from the Bureau of Meteorology, but it seems to be getting closer and closer by the day. It is the 13th storm to form so far this year. We are code yellow. In the Atlantic, it's 52 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins and there's very little to talk about as you would expect. A big frontal system there moving across the main ocean region, but nothing else to talk about, which is excellent news for the time being. But here's where the action is, 80% chance now that we're giving an area of interest that's looking really decent as it approaches the Philippine Islands, looks like at least on satellite imagery it's going to get there very soon. 30% system also has just been designated much to the east there, over the eastern Micronesian Islands could develop in that 5 day period. There's Tropical Storm 18S off the coast of the Kimberley in Western Australia and that will eventually turn southwards and southeastwards and recurves into land in the Pilbara or possibly still in the Kimberley region there as a very powerful storm but we're still yet to see uh, it get particularly strong just yet with winds holding at around 60 miles per hour. Southwest Indian Ocean, calm and content, not much going on there right now either, so it's a quiet basin there. Satellite imagery, this is what rainfall has looked like in the last 24 hours. You can see some of that red zone there off the coast of Australia. You can clearly see um, the cyclone's impact there in terms of rain rates. And certainly some uh, peripheral coastal areas there will be getting lots of rainfall, totaling possibly 10 inches, 250 millimeters. Here's some satellite imagery. A wide shot of everything that's going on right now, those three systems that we're looking at, you can just about make out that other Western Pacific system with slight rotation much further east, very low latitude, but the one near the Philippines really bulked up there with that powerful convection but here is 18s and you can see it was doing quite well uh, had a big bulk of convection there which was expanding southwards but in the latest imagery particularly when we look at the uh, enhanced infrared here you can see that once again it's fallen apart in those last few hours uh, so who knows where we're going to go from here with this tropical cyclone it needs to stack together and get particularly uh, well organized before it starts on its way intensifying the radar imagery just about shows you what it's looking like along the Dampier Peninsula and beyond Here's the Philippine system really looking good on this sat satellite imagery. What's holding it back at the moment is that from what we caught earlier on in an ASCAP pass, uh, that it was lacking a center of circulation. That of course may have changed now, and it really is looking good on that satellite imagery. Sea surface temperatures look like this in the Eastern Pacific, very good indeed and warming, 30 degrees plus already, starting to bake south of Mexico. In the Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea looking okay, 28 degrees Celsius, a few little slithers of that now, uh, reaching the Caribbean Sea. In the Indian Ocean, it looks like this, very warm in the deep tropics. Up through the Bay of Bengal, it is starting to feed through, 30 degrees, even getting close to 32 in some spots. Southwest Indian Ocean looks like it's starting to cool down now, uh, but still some areas have very good temperatures and still around 28 even at the Masserine Islands and the Mozambique beak channel still looking fair. Australian region can't underestimate that enormous warm pool there off the west coast of Australia 32 degrees plus in that region also near the Solomon Islands very warm sea surface temperatures there as well towards Vanuatu and Fiji uh, 30 degrees plus just to the north of there and across the islands of Samoa. And finally looking at the Western Pacific, sea surface temperatures looking okay, they are increasing and where that system is right now it's around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius and just starting to drop off a little bit. 
Sea surface temperature anomalies, they are above average in the Philippine Sea, but very much above average in the Coral Sea, and over there of Western Australia, still above average, not quite as much, interestingly, and still that pronounced heat off the coast of South America, where we could be seeing that El Nino trying to build in. Also the Gulf there as well, the Gulf of Mexico looking warm too. Uh, it has been for quite a few updates now, but I've just found the time to mention it. Oceanic heat content remains good in the uh, main part of the South Pacific, north of Fiji and near Samoa, so it's quite low latitudes, uh, but it is starting to shrink just slightly uh, further south. Eastern Pacific already building up ni nicely there, although we won't expect any systems for a while. And in the Western Pacific looking decent as well, uh, decent amounts, moderate amounts where that system is right now. GFS five day range shows that first system moving through the Philippines there, uh, probably a landfall on Catanduanes uh, through the Bicol region and then towards uh, the northern part of Luzon, but it doesn't really survive the passage at all and it just dissipates completely. It becomes unrecognizable at some point through that loop. Then there's that other system way to the east there that starts to develop as it slowly moves northwards and does develop into a tropical storm, I think, or not quite nearly there by the end of that five day period. Here's the Australian system and it becomes a much stronger storm quite quickly. GFS is banking on that uh, transition happening in the next 12 hours or so for the storm to rapidly intensify then make landfall. Curiously, the GFS has been trending northwards after landfall. Earlier, you may remember it was going down towards New South Wales. Now look at this latest forecast. It's pretty much moving eastwards after it makes landfall and makes it back towards Queensland in the end, which is really fascinating to see how that does a really strong ridge clearly building in from the south. We are still expecting a strong landfall, probably of category 4 intensity, and we expect that it will be just east of Port Hedland, and look at the amount of rainfall that you'll expect in those areas too. A few patches of over 10 inches, not that many to be fair, uh, but near the centre of the storm's landfall zone, maybe up to 14 inches or 350 millimetres, and inland a swathe of high rainfall amounts moving in there. Still off the coast near Derby and north Woods of there we're still looking at potentially six more inches of rain that's 150 millimeters and one or two spots even further north there as well probably not completely associated with the storm but another 150 millimeters there to the southwest of Darwin so a rain event as well as a potentially big wind event there in the longer range, day 5 to 10, we're looking at that Western Pacific system. It's way out at sea there. You just about make out the Guam and the uh, uh, the Mariana Islands. I almost forgot the name there. It strengthens this system, moves westwards a little bit, and then starts to move northwards and eastwards. Might become a typhoon, uh, low-end Category 1 by the looks of things. Uh, but there we are. Interesting track for an early season storm. I uh, suppose we've seen a few like that. Reminds me of the two that we saw in 2014 actually in April. Uh, Tapa and I forget the other one. And this is the South Pacific and there is another surprise on the way if the GFS has its way. And you can see here a very powerful cyclone for Queensland, although we have seen this a few times this season so far and it never verified so I would certainly um, put caution onto this one uh, but a large cyclone and a very powerful one that becomes probably a category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale can't be ruled out though even in this getting late in the season phase. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store and all of our products including full season and individual storm animations on request. We also still have our still waiting for Hode t-shirt. It could be becoming an endangered species because it looks like we could get a Hode later this season according to our latest prediction. In the Silly Range, that storm eventually clears off towards the east and towards the northeast there. Might even make a crack at the international dateline there and could enter the Central Pacific, but it doesn't get the Hone name, even if it did cross over. But eventually it does die off there, nothing else in the super long range, so it's just this that we're looking at. But at least you can see there that the rest of the Western Pacific remains quiet during that 16 day period. 
You can talk about that and anything from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin and in the wide world of weather on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical and general weather chat with people from around the world, over 3,000 members there. <clears throat> Well, on this day, it was April 11th, 2021, when we had a Western Australian threat of a different to make landfall as a Category 2 storm at a very far uh, south area there, uh, just along that coast of Western Australia, after it caused problems in Indonesia in its formative stages. We also had uh, what was left of Tropical Storm 28S just on its way out, having passed uh, New Caledonia. That was on this day two years ago already, for those who remember that. Back to this year. Uh, the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it's still Hone, as it has been since 2019. In the Western Pacific, the first name is Sanvu. It should be mentioned that the Philippines have already named that system Amang. Uh, so on the Philippine naming list, we've already used one now. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name there is Mocha. 13 storms so far as it stands. In the Southern Hemisphere, next up still is Ilsa. Could be in as little as an hour, depending on what the bomb think. Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabien, and the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.